to another review by Fat Ninja Studios. I'm your host, Jackie K, and today we're making our way through Don't Breathe 2, a sequel to the surprising smash hit Don't Breathe by Freire Alvarez. Before we venture into darkness, however, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to touch that bell icon to stay up to date with our newest releases. Alright, follow me! The film starts off eight years after the events of the first film. Norman is living in a house with an 11-year-old girl named Phoenix and their Rottweiler Shadow, who he tells that her mother died in a house fire. A woman by the name of Hernandez, who also happens to be an ex-army ranger, talks him into letting her take the girl into town for the day, and he begrudgingly acquiesces. While in town, some biker dude tries to kidnap Phoenix and is scared off by Shadow. The biker and his gang follow Hernandez, waiting for her to drop the girl off before stopping her and then killing her. They also lure out the dog and kill it. Bastards. When Norman goes outside to try to call the dog in, he finds its dead body and suddenly the gang break into his home trying to kidnap the girl. However, she's been trained by Norman and manages to evade them for a good while, before a fight between them and Norman breaks out and she gives herself up. Here, the biker leader, Raylan, reveals he's the true father of Phoenix. Eight years ago, a meth lab exploded in their house, which caused the fire, and Raylan had been sent to prison. As Norman was passing by, he found the unconscious Phoenix in the rubble and took her in to replace his own dead daughter, essentially. When Raylan got out of jail, he saw Phoenix once she put flowers on her mother's grave. Phoenix then gets knocked out by one of the other gang members, and they leave Norman in the house, setting it on fire and trapping him with their own dog. Norman tricks the dog into the attic and traps it behind an old set of mattress springs. Since the house is on fire, Norman decides he can't let the dog die, however, and sets it free, befriending it essentially, and escapes the burning building. He then uses the dog to lead him back to the gang's hideout. At the hotel, Raylan reveals that Phoenix is actually named Tara, and her mom is still alive, just terminally ill. Because of, you know, cooking meth and the resulting explosion. She inhaled a bunch of chemicals which have poisoned her organs. So basically, they plan on cutting little Tara open, extracting her organs, and transplanting them into mom. Wonderful. They get ready to do the procedure, but just then, the power goes out. Norman has arrived, and he takes out most of the gang pretty easily. He kills the surgeon, who inadvertently shoots the mom, and then gouges out the eyes of Raylan to leave him for dead. Norman then tells Tara the truth about himself, basically the events of the first film, and tells her to leave. He is suddenly stabbed by Raylan, who is miraculously still alive, at least for a few seconds, before Tara stabs him. Tara tries to save Norman, but... He tells her that she already has, and then he dies. Tara then flees to a children's home and introduces herself as Phoenix. In a post credit scene, we see Norman's fingers twitch after the dog licks him, indicating he may still be alive. Overall, this movie was kinda flat. Nowhere near as good as the first film, not tense or truly suspenseful, and the twist is kind of ridiculous. There were so many unanswered questions from the first film that they could have addressed, or other plots that they could have chosen. But regardless, this film had some cool scenes in it, but otherwise doesn't deserve any real attention. I give it a 5 out of 10, the high praise being the cinematography, the rest of it having a negative effect. If you're a fan of the first one, and are desperate for more blind man stalking and killing people, then by all means see the film. But if you're looking for something as nail-biting as the first installment, you're not going to find it here. Thanks for checking out our video. Please give it a like, share, and subscribe to our channel. If you'd like to contribute to our channel's growth, please visit our Patreon, which is linked below in the description. You can reach out to us on Twitter, at StudiosFat, or chat with us on Discord, also linked below. I've been your host, Jackie K, and before I go, Jugs are bad, okay? They will lead you down a path of self-destruction. There's nothing cool about taking drugs, and they will always end up taking your life. If you or someone you know are addicted to drugs like meth, heroin, or crack, please encourage them to seek help and get clean. 
They may say they have it under control, but the truth is, they are under control of the drugs. You can get clean. You can get your life back on track. It's not impossible, but only you can do it. Thanks again, and take care.